Something that I don't do a lot these days is meet new people. What's going on today is I'm meeting someone virtually through Zoom. I'm getting on the Zoom call with this guy. His name's Brandon Wong. We have mutual friends. We're going to have a conversation about topics ranging from mutual friends, what we did in high school, what we do for work, and just really, you know, the experience that we're having at home. So if you recall, I actually used to commute to and from work about three hours a day one and a half hours each way, and that was called the commuter experience. This is the remoter experience. So check it out. Here's the video. Hope you enjoy. So yeah, I guess, um, how do we know each other, right? Like, I think we had each other on Facebook once. I saw you on Millennial Money, but we do have mutual friends. It's always good to be friends with you know, people who are in the same interests. So, uh, I mean, when I saw that you added me on Facebook, we got a couple friends, right? I think the one worth mentioning is John Chung. How do you know John? So um, I'm actually friends with his brother, Daniel, um, and he was a big Pokemon person in, in the community. And so was I. So we met uh, actually four years ago, five years ago at El Camino when I was doing community college and starting getting into Pokemon. And then we just kept in touch ever since because he I mean, he's just so, so close by. So he was yeah. really big on that. And I was also really big on that. So we were always collaborating and figuring out where the best product is and how to move product uh -huh. and so uh i went out to pomona for college and then i was even closer to him he was in rolling yeah. heights so we got really close and then i met john through and through that through him gotcha yeah. that's really cool man yeah because john you know i talked to him every once in a while since we're remote but he actually was on my uh software dev team um when he or when i got into engineering and then he was on that same team you know he was kind of like my mentor for the time that he was with that team, he had a hiatus for a little bit, needed a break from work, and then now he's back at the same company. So, I mean, talking about work, like I just said, like we're both software engineers. Like I, I saw on your profile, and this is funny because after, uh, you know, you hit me up for this, you know, I started doing some stalking. So I did the whole Facebook, saw the mutual friends, but I also looked up at your LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And I noticed that, and I also listened to your podcast, which, by the way, you know, listen to this guy on the podcast on Beyond Tech. Check that out on Spotify. That's really cool. Cool, thanks. But um, you work for the Academy for the Oscars. That's right. You mind? Uh, I'm curious. How do you, how do you how are you an engineer for that? Like, what do you do for it? Uh, yeah, believe it or not, it's very surprising. I didn't know that they had a software engineering team as well. And it's we do a lot more than just what meets the eye. We have a streaming platform. We have mobile apps. We have a lot of internal applications that we have to maintain so i guess looking at it now why wouldn't we have one and i think a lot of a lot goes to show for even like fast food chains you don't think they need one and then but they do have a mobile app that you can do mobile order and stuff so um yeah that's and it's actually a lot of work <laughs> like believe it or yeah. not so yeah um it's really fun though because we do get to attend the academy or the oscars every year so it's that's one of the benefits that's cool. So you you obviously most likely went this last February. Yeah. Before mm -hmm. everything shut down. Right? Before everything shut down. We got really lucky. Well, that's super cool, man. I I never knew if you know you if anyone's watching this and they didn't know the Academy of the Oscars has everything done on the back end by this guy, you know who to call. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters. There you I'm go. Um, going back to your LinkedIn profile, I'm gonna talk about it because you know I stopped the hell out of that thing. All right. Sure thing. When did you graduate high school? Uh, I graduated in 2013. Okay, so I was still in college. Okay, so you're just a few years younger than me. I noticed I noticed you are a member of Kiwanis, or were you specifically like in Key Club back in high school? or certain Yeah. Like that? Mm -hmm. in, um, in high school, I was the vice president of my Key Club for three years. Three years? Yeah. Well, so, were you, were you uh, officer in 2010? Um, I think I just became officer in 2010. Um, and I started doing the district conventions with like Narbonne and um, all the other Torrance schools. Okay. It, I have to mention this because, you know, I was, I was in Key Club back in high school. I graduated 2010. I actually was district secretary my senior year. I was lieutenant governor my junior year. And then, uh, you know, club officer before that. The thing I'm getting to is my fiance was actually a district officer in uh, 20, 2009, 2008, 2009. And she was actually an international officer 2010. And that's how we met. 
Oh, so you, you both are Key Club, uh, I guess, <laughs> members. I don't know. I don't know what to call it now. No, it's so. funny, man. Yeah, it's funny. We, me and my fiance talk about it every once in a while. We actually meet with a uh, friend group on an annual basis, except this year because of COVID. But we meet with them every year and they know each and every one of them know each other because of Key Club. And then they all graduated in 2010 or 2009. And then I just became part of that group because I was, you know, I'm obviously with my fiance, but also we have those shared memories of Key Club. I think that's where, that's why I regard it so highly because it's one of the areas in which I learned the skills that I have now to lead projects and kind of speak up and coordinate events. Because if it wasn't for those type of experiences, then I think I would be less knowledgeable now about them. And I wasn't even like a big position. It was just, I was a vice vice president of the club at my school, which is, yeah. you know, not very large. We just organized community service events locally. Mm-hmm. But you're like what you were saying, like being the district governor or lieutenant um, of the district, um, that's a big job because now you're coordinating multiple schools. And then when you go even higher than that, it's multiple districts. And so, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, and you have someone that's 18 doing it. I don't know where they are now, but a lot of them got into great schools too because of it. How old were you when you started coding? Um, <clears throat> truly coding, I was 14. Okay, so yeah, pretty young. Like, uh, <laughs> full disclosure on this, I actually didn't start coding until my sophomore year of college. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, everyone starts like at a certain point, but, and, I think that I didn't start actually coding harder stuff until mm. about that time too. Mm. The th- things that I was doing was, I guess, programs on the TI calculator. So oh, that's sure. basic, right? Yeah. And then yeah. uh, maybe HTML websites design. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not really, people have their mixed opinions on how, if that's coding or not. But I think it is because it's, you're building an application with some sort of synta- syntax or language. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I didn't start actually doing like data structures or algorithms until around around college time. But it. it was that experience that helped me transition very easily into that. So I think I talked about it in my in one of my YouTube videos. I was just like, you go in, they give you a piece of paper to transfer that just asks for a couple credentials like your name, current major, year, and then or your reason why, like just a one line like blank reason why and we both wrote i like computers no lie and then next fall we were in computer science the semester after that anyone who tried to transfer in needed like 4.0s they needed you know all this and that and then there were people complaining like they couldn't get in i was just like what the f i'm so Mm. glad i got in when i got in so you can't write i like computers anymore that's Not a pretty legitimate all. excuse, I think. No, yeah, I, I agree too. <laughs> but like, that's the thing. It's like, I lucked out because right now, like the profiles are like, you need 4.0s, you need extracurriculars and you're in college, right? So, you know, having extracurriculars in college is even difficult. What, um, I mean, what, what do you watch on YouTube now? Since you mentioned YouTube, we could talk about that. Um, so it's a mix, but it's actually, I, I haven't seen my history in a while and I kind of forget sometimes what I watch, but Casey Neistat's been vlogging recently again. So I watch his vlog every morning. Um, Mr. Beast, like I can't get away from Mr. Beast content. Like it's the, it's always number one in trending. Yeah. yeah. Um, As far as productive things, uh, I do watch a lot of Andre and Graham. Okay. And then I do watch Tech Lead. You mentioned Mr. Beast. Do you watch other uh, big people like uh, PewDiePie? Of course. Yeah. PewDiePie. Actually, well, uh, PewDiePie whenever it seems appropriate because I know um, <laughs> his content is kind of the same so random dude. Yeah, yeah it's all it's random crazy. stuff and he so, still gets like thousands if mil- millions of views oh yeah like re- me- he does meme review the, the Lawai stuff so yeah. um, I feel like Mr. Beast he he provides more interesting content no offense because yeah, sure. you never know what he's going to come up with something really mm-hmm. crazy well, shoot, man. I mean, we've been talking for a while, talking about a lot of things. You're, you're a cool guy, you know? Like, it would be nice to meet each other in person. Yeah, we should. We should get some food. I was going to say that because you're so close. Um, you know, you're in the area. I mean, 
with Sands right now, me and my fiance, we barely go out. Like we go out maybe like one to three times a month. And those times are literally just to go to Costco, get food. We're mm-hmm. so busy. But at the same time, it's like, we're just like, we're probably, uh, what's the word? Kind of over-exaggerating it, but it's like, we're really worried. Bodies. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I mean that too, but we're also worried like if we do go out more often, like there is a percentage chance greater than zero of actually catching sure. COVID. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but the thing is, it's like, at least we're productive with our time, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, yeah. I think um, that's, that's the mentality I have. It's right now is a weird time because everyone is thinking like, man, I really want to travel. I really want to get the heck out of here. And, as humans, we're not meant to be locked up or like this. Um, with, so I think it's important to keep, keep the mentality of what can I do under the circumstance with under the limitations? Because even if I were to travel or it's just not in the, it just shouldn't be even in the agenda. So let's try to do what we can with what we have. And I think sure. that's, that's like the best, the best way to put it, even though it's like against our, our own programming per se because you know we're species too we're meant to like go out and roam the earth and like meet new people is there uh got any questions for me man um no i i think we we pretty much covered it all but like i'd I'd love to meet in person one day if we can grab a bite or something since we're so close for sure because i'm just like whoa this guy lives literally lives right over there like that's that's perfect, especially since it's so hard to meet people in person now. Like I've been like meeting people from like overseas and um, even people that are like in different states. But mm-hmm. I don't think we'll ever actually be able to meet anytime soon, sure. like realistically. Right. So I think you're the first guy that I haven't met during quarantine or I met before quarantine. But now I can actually like meet people social distance and i can actually see you physically yeah that's cool no i appreciate it that's really cool because i haven't done it much you know the only people i really talk to are my fiance uh my mom whenever i get a chance to talk to her my co-workers um i actually do talk to graham every week and the mentorship group because i'm part of that so there's that um and just you know people on youtube messaging me uh people on instagram messaging me so hey nice And with that, everyone, thanks so much for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. That'll help my video reach others on the internet. Catch it on YouTube. Also, the notification bell if you want to know the next time I post videos on my channel. You can find me on Instagram. I post there from time to time. Various topics, everyday life things, if you want to be part of it there. With the knowledge that you may have gained from this video, I really appreciate it. Let's get to work.